What's up everybody? This is Big Joe from Fourth Kind Paranormal. I'm about to do a blind react. This lady is going on her very first ghost hunt and it's at the Warner where is it? The Warner Grand Theater, one of the most haunted theaters in the country. This should be pretty interesting. Um if you guys like my content, please like and subscribe. It really helps my channel out big time. All right, let's get to it. On this episode of Challenge Accepted, I am here at the Border Grand Theater in San Pedro, California to go on my very first ghost hunt. Challenge Accepted. I heard this place is pretty nuts. Thanks for sponsoring a portion of this video. Hi guys, it's so nice to meet you. I'm Michelle. My name is Brandon Alvis from a &E's Ghost Hunters. I've been investigating since 2006. I'm Craig Owens. I'm the author of Haunted by History, Volume 1. My name's Kevin. I've been investigating for 12, 13 years, kind of all over Midwest, West Coast. I'm a ghost skeptic, but I am terrified of horror. I just watched Squid Game and I haven't slept in a week like I did not sleep last night at all. I am very You have never scared. seen Squid Game. It'll be interesting to see what happens tonight because you never know in places like these. So welcome to the Warner Grand Theater. It actually opened on January 20th, 1931, right during the Great Depression. What makes this special is that this one was the first Warner Brothers Theater to actually be built for talking pictures. Tonight, we're going to show Michelle a real paranormal investigation. It has a strong emphasis on scientific principles, and we're gonna use devices that are more scientific in nature. So this is what they call K2 meter. Okay. And this picks up electromagnetic energy, and we use this to see if there's EMF in a place, just to know if there's any natural things anywhere. EMF stands for electromagnetic frequencies or electromagnetic fields. It's something that is all throughout the world, not only naturally, but through man-made devices. The higher... Yeah, those K2s actually work really well. The EMF gets, the more your lights are going to light up, and they'll change colors. So if you put a cell phone against it or something, it'll start lighting up because it'll pick up that energy. So like if I use... Yep. There it goes. So you can see how it lights up. Okay. Let's get to the very first like paranormal hotspot. Okay. This area right here this place has already looks pretty creepy. from not only employees that have worked here, but some people that have scouted. Is that spiking? Yeah, it's about oh, middle. Oh, you feel it? You're seeing it? It's been three minutes. <laughs> She's also got it right by the microphone. It. But if you notice, it's consistent. It's not fluctuating that much. And so this means that it's not supernatural, it's natural. And it could be wiring underneath. Some people are way more susceptible to EMF, so that can make you even hallucinate at times. Skin rashes, nausea, high heart rate. See, I like this. They're, they're already trying to debunk um, the EMF readings, which, uh, which is actually pretty good. It's pretty professional. I like it. Headaches. Headaches. Sweating. Could the oh ghost God. stories be associated with that? Maybe. Or is it possible that this high EMF that's in this building is giving fuel to possible entities? That's something you could look at it from both sides. So Manifest there could be something. like... This could be just like a big food trough. here right now. Yeah. It's like a big delicatessen for ghosts. Okay. Shall we continue? <laughs> <laughs> I personally love He's already starting to trip out. because there's a romanticism to the past. It's like time travel. I want to relive those times. I want to hear those sounds. God, I love I places like this. Those people. And in this case, I want to see those movies. Maybe the past isn't quite as dead. As you know, even if there aren't any ghosts or anything like that, just, just the history of it. Places like that are pretty cool. As we're told that it is, and that maybe there's a memory or maybe there's a personality from the past that's still lingering. Some other people have claimed to have seen like a really darting, maybe shadow figure. It comes from one of the wings and it shoots up to the projection booth. Projection booth? Yes. So is that the projectionist ghost then? I will say I, I do get a sense of someone or something watching us from that area. So here we are in the projection booth. Oh my gosh. There Check was a long shoes. time projectionist here. His last name was Lord, and that's all I know. <laughs> Mr. Lord, okay? But uh, he died about 10 years ago, and he supposedly isn't here all the time, but this he loves the space and he checks in periodically. <laughs> there was a paranormal team. They did an investigation, and I saw the video footage, 
and it looked authentic enough to me. A spool apparently flew off of a shelf and like hit a wall. It was a spool about maybe that big. And over here is an additional room to the projection. So Craig, you said Mr. Lord, right? So no one's actually used that name in an investigation here? Craig? That is correct. So your first investigation, your first time here, I think it's only fitting that you do it. And hopefully he'll answer you back. Okay, cool. Did anyone just hear that? Hmm. You didn't hear that? What was it? Straight up sounded like something dragged on the floor and I heard like a deep breath, like <sighs> Oh really? You didn't you guys didn't hear that? Seriously? I didn't hear it, but then again I have ten tinnitus. Let me tell you, I've experienced something like that firsthand, just going through the walkthrough and you're already catching stuff. I mean it just amps up that investigation later. That it that's too cool. <laughs> So now let's kill the lights and get the investigation started. Okay. But before we begin the investigation, I want to take a moment to say a huge thank you to Google Pixel 6 for spot awesome. And the face and blur feature keeps your face in focus. I love it. Oh my gosh, it's like Vegas. Isn't it? <laughs> it email. sounds like Vegas. <laughs> But again, why it's spiking so much now is because the device is on the stage. I'm going to try and like, some space. cut through all the, the commercials. And all. So this is called a Paralyte. So this is a you know, know, detector similar stuff. to the, the one you have in your hand there, both. But this one's a little different because... Oh my god! I love it! Oh my god! It's like Vegas! <laughs> Isn't it? And it sounds like Vegas. Oh, why it's spiking on. so much now is because, like earlier, this is an area with a lot of EMF. So this is an EDI Plus, what I refer to as a Swiss Army knife of the paranormal. And what this does is it registers temperature, pressure, humidity, vibration, and EMF. So what we'll do is we'll have this paralyte here. We'll set up this EDI Plus as well. And you just pick a spot you think is comfortable. And then we'll all kind of spread out and we'll start a session. One thing oh, that we kill always these do lights. is we want to show respect to not only the building, but to the possible entities that may be here. So I'll start off saying my name is Brandon. I come here with the fullest respect for yourself in this theater. This guy makes a good point. Um, whenever you start off an investigation, you you, you want to show respect for what, what's over there. It's honestly, it's just like good manners. Like if you're talking to your neighbor, you know, kind of puts everybody at ease, including the spirits. Talk about what your intentions are here. Just kind of get a familiarity with the space. Okay. Um, hello. <laughs> My name is Michelle. I come in peace. And I am here just to leave here with a better understanding of who or what you are. If you're here with us, can you show us? We come here to learn about you, about your story, what connection you may have to this theater, and anything you want to let us know. Those devices can detect your presence, and we can possibly have a conversation with you. They are not meant to harm you. They will not harm you. We just want to use these as tools to try and have a conversation with you. Just so we know if that was you, the one with the pink light on it, can you make it go all the way up to the top? Can you get close enough to make the lights change colors all the way up to the top? Check that out. Try a little bit harder. Oh, dude. It went halfway That's up cool. that time. Can you do it one more time for me? Just so we know, one more time. Give it all you got and see how high you can make those lights go. You guys aren't doing anything. No, we're not. No, we, we would never, ever, ever try and do something like that. And his phone can't be setting it off. No, like uh, I showed you. You notice right since there. we haven't been asking questions, it hasn't went off. If it was his phone, it would be going off the entire time. So one thing that's interesting, we haven't established who, you know, who we're talking to yet. How would you figure that out? You gotta keep a line of questioning. We call it control questions. For instance, we can ask, if you're a female, can you 
make that device blink again. It's okay. Okay, real quick. I love going on investigations with skeptics. You know, it's just, it, it's, as soon as they encounter their first bit of evidence, it's just kind of watching them poop their pants. It, it's awesome. Uh, this sets up a... What? What the f*** is that? It was loud. Hey, that was something slamming, huh? I came from up there. It sounded like a set piece fell over. It sounded, That's what it sounded like. It sounded very, like a set wall or a piece of wood. going off again here, too. It was really, really high up. Should like, I say we stay in this session, okay. for sure. Because we can go find that, okay. you know? But another thing that we've noticed with certain investigations, if things are happening in one area, it feels like something can draw you into a separate area, you know? Did something bad happen to you here? Is this a happy place for you? There you go. Michelle, ask him if they know. Well, you don't know if it's answering oh. yes or no. Oh, that was weird. Oh, 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 that was weird. Is this Mr. Lord? They pooped really high. <laughs> we're gonna do an EVP burst session. So basically we're gonna start recording. We're gonna ask maybe two or three questions and then play it back to see if we got any type of response on it. It's so EVP is electronic voice phenomenon. Most of the time you don't hear them in the moment. You hear them after the fact when you're going back through your audio and video. Is there something you want to show us? Can you tell us into the recorder what you want us to see? Did you know Mr. Lord? Is there something you want to show us? Can you tell us into the recorder what you want us to see? What's that? Sounds like a breath kind of really yeah oh yeah i heard that yeah. right there and that couldn't have been us breathing it's not like static i don't think so can you hear that oh, pressure and temperature change right there and emf damn it's going crazy oh yep you could actually hear that, that way hey if you're back there can you come forward if you want us to move and try a different area can you make that light up even higher So are we moving on? Yeah, let's do it. What do you think? That was really bizarre. That big crash. That big yeah. crash is we weird. We need to find out what that yeah, was. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Dude, she's all Spirit boxes scan awesome. through radio frequencies, and it said the spirits are able to manipulate the white noise and be able to answer questions and uh, speak words through it. We'll pull this chair up here, and we're gonna set you right here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna plug the earphones into the spirit box, and so you're gonna be listening to that. Just white noise, just ch -ch 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 -ch. And we're going to blindfold you. <clears throat> and you're gonna sit- Don't we're gonna touch me, right? <laughs> you're gonna sit here, and we're actually gonna step right down there. We're gonna ask questions, and we want you to say out loud any voices or sentences or words you hear come over the spirit box. I'm not a big fan of it. I'm very skeptical. It's all radio frequencies. So anytime you use this device, if you were to take that to a third party, say an audio engineer, yep. it would be declared contaminated. So I'm yep. skeptical, but I think we'll do some pretty cool tests with it here tonight. I was just about to say the exact same thing. You know, the spirit boxes are cool, but unless you got perfectly streaming white noise, all you get is radio chatter. And it's really hard to discern whether if it's... Uh, a spirit talking to you, or if it's just radio chatter. Oh my God, this is so freaky. Can you hear us? Okay, good. So this right now good. we have Michelle sitting in this room in this chair. Can you go up and tell her what your name is? 
Do you see Michelle? If you can see Michelle in the chair. Uh, it was like uh, someone saying, oh no, but it was like pitched. It was like, oh no. It's very overwhelming to just be listening to the whooshing and it's very loud. And then out of nowhere, you hear a voice or something like, it's just really freaky. Remember, you need to communicate through Michelle, the woman with the mask, because we cannot hear you, but Michelle can. If you're next to her, can you tap her on the shoulder? How can you let her know that you're here? Oh my God. Uh, it was a male voice, almost like just came through super clear. Say again. Are you here alone? Is there something we can help you with? I don't know that we should go on too much longer. Yes, I was thinking. Is there anything you want to tell her before we go shut the machine off? Ah! Uh, it was a female voice. Like, agreeing. There is something else you want to tell us? What do you want us to know? You might want to cut it, Kevin. You know what I mean? That's enough. Can I take this off now? Yeah. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Did anything happen? We asked if there was anything you wanted to tell us before we left. And that's when you heard the last female voice like right after I had asked that question. So what was your overall impression? Did you think these voices were radio frequencies coming in blitz, blips and pieces? I, I think they probably were, but there was that like transatlantic 50s like tone, something that would not be on the radio in 2021. And there was no music. I don't know, you know like how in the movies people from the 50s like sound a certain way. Cinderella, sound of voice. Yeah, yeah. The very pleasantry that you talked about earlier. But yeah, I could see like, it's sort of like inconclusive. Mm -hmm. Right. What you can draw from that. Oh, very much so. Yeah. Very much so, and it may not mean Why all the jumping around? I'm really curious to see how responsive the projection room is. We can go there next. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The constant feeling of being watched kind of everywhere we went was a little unnerving. A lot of places felt heavy. It's got a different vibe up here now, huh? A little bit. It does feel heavier. It does. So we know the name of the man who used to work here, who passed away 10 years ago, and it's never been used in a paranormal investigation. For the greatest effect possible, should we turn off all of our camera lights and just be in the dark for a bit? We could, yeah. Absolutely. Finally. <laughs> can you see there us, Daniel? Yeah, I can. All right, so we're up here in the projection room. My name is Brandon. We come here with the fullest respect for yourself in this theater. And we think we possibly know your name and we'd like to speak with you. I understand that you really loved this place and I'm going to leave it to Michelle to ask you about your name. Hello, I'm Michelle. I'm a big movie fan, so it's really wonderful to be in your space. We'd love to know if you're here with us. If you're here, Mr. Lord. I'm assuming that's a temperature reading. Please let us know. You all right? Yes. Mr. Lord, um, the general manager of this theater only knew your last name. We would like to know what your first name is, or what name do you like to go by? OK, 
kind of get the feeling like something's here, but it's just standing back observing. You can see why there was someone up here. You know, you can see why they would be up here. Whoa, that just flew off the stage. Oh my God. What was it? What, what was that? What the f***? Someone just flew off the stage. I saw it move. I swear to God, I looked over there on the stage. It was right there, that big ass pillar. See it? Oh I saw that. Holy shit. I swear oh, to God, I saw me. that move. Oh my God. We have to go down there. Let's, let's go. Oh my heart is coming out of my <laughs> chest. Dude, I saw it like actually go down. Did you stay where you're at? When we were down there? Nobody's been down there for a long time. What the actual hell, dude? Anybody here? Yeah, man. <sighs> You're asking questions in a certain spot and then you get a noise somewhere else. A lot of times, you know, spirits will do that just to get you away from where you're at. This way they don't have to interact with you. Man, I stayed where I was for a minute, you know, and then check that out. We're coming down. That was the first time I've ever seen something move. Like, with my own eyes. I, I've never seen that before. Oh, I kept feeling like something was down there whenever we were up there. God, Look, this poor girl's going to change looking your shorts. Like it would have fallen, too, had it not been caught. Feel how heavy that is. Feel that. Oh, my God. OK. This is. We're impressed. <laughs> yeah, we're very impressed. The falling linoleum was 120 pounds, according to the employee that works here. Even when I leave it like this, straight up, it's leaning back. And look at this. Even when I pull on it a little bit, it still oh, rocks yeah. back that way. Wind couldn't have done that. You no. know what I mean? And there is none. And it most likely would have fallen back. What the hell, man? Are you a believer <laughs> now? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> what if we split up? That's how People every horror movie here. starts, Craig. Come on! In the paranormal world, you're lucky <laughs> that, that something like this happened. Believers and non-believers share one thing in common. They see and hear what they want to see and hear. And somewhere yeah. between the two is where the truth is. Thank you guys so much for being here with All right. You know, that was actually pretty entertaining. Um, it, it, it's always cool to see a skeptic uh, kind of get scared out their shorts. So, oh, thank you guys for watching. And uh, if you if you enjoy my content, um, please like and subscribe. Like I said, it does help the channel out immensely. So, all right, guys. You guys have a good night. Stay safe. Love you.